when an entire computer network goes down or a part of that network or a component on that network goes down, what are the first steps that you need to take to troubleshoot or find the cause of the issue on that network before anarchy, the zombie apocalypse, or sending astronauts out into space to stop a giant asteroid occurs? I'm Clint Garrett, Ace Networker, and there are four basic steps that you need to take to troubleshoot any issue on a computer network. And these are what most network admins and technicians will actually do. The first step is, when I first started out in computer networking, I was a newbie. I had no idea how anything works. And after talking to some admins and after learning that there is a process, there is a framework that you can go through, I then understood that you can follow these four steps and basically, resolve just about any issue that occurs on a computer network. These are not hardline steps by any means. They are These are four basic steps that are done in most cases. 90 to 95% of the time, these are the steps that you would go through if you're a, an admin or a technician and everything has been working fine on your network and then something stops working or something breaks or something uh, you experience a power outage or a catastrophic event of some sort, a storm hits a certain area where you've got network components, a data center of some sort. What are the first steps that you need to go through to immediately find out what occurred, what changed? Let's start with step number one. In most problem resolution scenarios or most situations where you have to analyze something to determine what changed or caused the issues, and computer networks are really no different, the first and most important step is to define the problem. So step one is defining the problem. You want to start asking questions like, who is experiencing this problem on your network? What components are having the issue? Is it across the entire network or just a portion of it? Is it only a certain group of users and devices in a certain building or location? I have a list of questions like these available to not only ask users and, and people that are on your network, but to ask yourself so that you can be thorough in getting to the source of the problem you're having or experiencing on the network. Now, this first step is the most crucial. It is critical, as you can make a lot of assumptions here, and if you jump to too many conclusions too quickly without getting all of the data that you can possibly gather, and I can tell you from experience that making those assumptions and jumping to those conclusions way too soon out of the gate about what the issue actually is, it can cause more issues if you're not careful, and it can cause a whole lot more issues than you were prepared for. Those of us with experience will reiterate here that being thorough at this first step in the process is absolutely critical to making good analysis to what's causing or caused the issue on your network. And we emphasize this because when people or devices start having an issue on a network of any size, things start going wrong, nothing is working correctly, adrenaline can kick in because it may be costing a lot of money, or it could be presenting a safety issue, or even a life and death issue, depending on the nature of the computer network you're dealing with. You might be have a network in a hospital, for instance. You might have a bank or financial institution or an investment company of some sort. So because of the fact that you can cause even more havoc by too quickly jumping to conclusions and making assumptions without gathering as much data as possible, it's important that you take a breath, step back, and that you're extremely thorough here in this first step. So this first step includes talking to users that may be having connectivity or slowdown issues on the network, if that's what the issue is causing, or beginning a thorough but efficient bit of detective work, because you really need to be like a detective when you're troubleshooting issues on a network. And the biggest question to ask here at step one is this. First of all, you want to ask, was it working and was it working correctly previously or prior to this? And if so, what changed? So the biggest question you ask here is, what changed? Was there a power outage? Did someone knowingly connect or disconnect a cable, or unknowingly? Did someone unplug something? Did a new configuration get uploaded and, uh, and activated on a switch, or router, or server? What changed? And where? So once you've gathered as much data as possible on what the issue is, and hopefully where the issue is, and what might have changed since it worked previously, it's time to move on to step number two. Hey, we're going to get to those other steps in just a second, but before we do, if you are just starting out in computer networking and you really want to get the 30,000 foot view, I would invite you to sign up to my beginner's networking course. You'll find the link in the description below and get into that while you can. It's going to give you the 30,000 foot view of computer networking. If you're concerned about not knowing about the technologies involved, if you're concerned about how it's going to look if you don't understand something, 
if you're going to get into the industry or somehow get into a job and still not know what you think you need to know, if you're afraid of that, if you want to make big money in computer networking in a career or business of your own, and you've got all of these concerns, you, you don't want to buy $500 to $1,000 worth of textbooks and try to study it all, just get into that beginner's networking course and in there we're going to give you the 30,000 foot view and it's going to get you started correctly. It's time to move on to step number two, which is to isolate the issue or to attempt to isolate the issue. Can you isolate the issue? You can do things like use pings to different devices. You can check log files on devices around the issue, log files on switches, routers, servers, see if anything registered on those log files to determine that something changed or what changed. If you're using network management software, did any of the clients report anything into the management software or did it detect any changes? Can you use the ping utility on different connected devices to ping across a switch where multiple users reported lost connectivity, for example? Can you ping the switch's IP address itself? If it's a managed switch or a managed router and it has an IP address assigned to it, can you ping that IP address? Can you ping the server that may longer, no longer be working? Do you have users there on site to actually tell you what they're seeing or experiencing? Once you have a good grasp on isolating the issue and determining what more than likely occurred to cause the issue, you're ready to move on to step number three. In step number three, we're taking everything we've learned and determined in steps one and two, and we're beginning a tentative, if not permanent, move toward resolving the issue to get it back to the functioning state it was in prior to the issue occurring. For example, if it appears to be a physical layer issue, like physical components, cables, NICs, ports, even devices themselves, can you physically get on site to those devices or to those connections? Or do you have a technician on site to verify that a physical cable or NIC or device is no longer working? If a device lost power or it rebooted, like a switch or a router, can you still log into the device, either remotely or physically, using a serial modem cable directly connected to it to make sure the same configuration, you know, this is another example, the uh, same configuration was loaded when, re when it rebooted as it was using previous to the reboot or the power outage. Did it go back to some basic startup configuration, for example? Is the power still out if it was a power outage? Did a cable go bad and stop working? Or a wireless access point? Or a controller that controls multiple wireless access points? Now, by this point, you should be pinpointing exactly where the issue is or was and what caused it. Once you have a good determination and you've used some troubleshooting methods in step three here to really begin to isolate the issue and come up with a tentative solution, you're ready to move to step four, which is to find a resolution. Do you have a workaround? Can you send traffic through a backup or a failover device or devices if they're available? Failover device, for instance, you might have two switches with the same configuration running side by side with the same exact connections. If one goes down, the other one takes over and begins working and functioning for that. That's a failover device. Can you replace a cable if it's needed? If you yourself are doing this remotely and you're not physically there where the computer network is, or where the issue is, do you have a technician or technicians on site to physically go and replace the bad cable, or reboot the switch or the router, or look at the configurations? If you had backup power supplies, did they keep everything running long enough for the main power to kick back in and start working again? These are all different examples and scenarios. So step four is where you are immediately implementing a solution to attempt to get the network back to the point where it was previously or prior to the issue occurring. Now, those are the four basic steps. Now, I do want to follow this up with a bonus step, and you've probably already figured this out yourself, but if you haven't, step number five is you want to go back and you want to test that area, that system, that thing that you were having an issue with on the network, and you want to find out, did this resolve the issue? Is everything functioning correctly the way it was previous to this occurring? previous to this disconnection, previous to this device going out, this cable going bad, whatever the case may be that you found, we need to test it. So the fifth step really, there's really four steps to the troubleshooting process, but the fifth step is you want to test your own hypothesis, your own resolution, and you want to find out, did this resolve the issue? Did this indeed fix it? And you can do some of the same processes. You can ping across things, you can check your network management software, you can ask users to make sure that they're all connecting correctly, ping devices across devices, you can check bandwidth and check log files, make sure nothing is occurring additionally, but there are multiple ways you can test that. But you wanna test that and do a follow-up 
as step number five, you just want to test that solution to make sure that that is indeed the thing that solved the issue that you had.